going to mug me. I'm not going to mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Peace and Marathon. Download Veely now. to the late 1800s. The arts and crafts movement is at the height of its fame and a group of men and women are busy rewriting the rule books of design and architecture. They wanted to make everyday objects beautiful and they left an impact on British design we still feel today. But make no mistake, this was about so much more than pretty wallpaper and embroidered cushions. These artists, architects and political thinkers were starting a revolution. Inspired by art critic John Ruskin and socialist designer William Morris, they hated the drudgery and ugliness of the industrial age. They wanted to turn the clock back to an age where a craft worker's skills were valued. These were principles, not just for design, but for life. Bring joy to work, share knowledge, and make beauty accessible to all. From the 1880s to the 1920s, they spread their radical message across Britain. Art could help to end social inequality. Which is a great idea, if you can make it work. To find out what we can learn from the arts and crafts movement, six 21st century craftspeople are heading back to the world of the 19th. The crafters are going back to basics. They won't find computer-aided design or power tools here. In real life, we wouldn't be worried about it. Just put the machine, <laughs> we'll go. Now they're spending a month together in a Victorian artist's commune. We're going to be up early, we're going to be in late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. They'll be living the arts and crafts dream. Oh, Simplicity, fellowship, Thank you. and taking joy in work as they remake this stunning house room by room without tears or tantrums. You start off all being very nicey-nicey. As the pressure builds up, it's really hard to hide the real you. Can they recreate the beautiful objects and high ideals of the arts and crafts movement by hand? Oh. And will recapturing the spirit of the past bring fresh creativity to the crafts of the present? For the last three weeks, the crafters have been living the life of artisans from the 1890s. Last time round, Rod Hughes most impressed the judges with his dining room fire dogs. In doing the construction, I really had to show bits of artistry that the blacksmiths employed at the time. I really felt a responsibility to do it well. So yeah, I'm very pleased with them and, and uh, yeah, love them to death. It's now the last week of the crafters' month-long tour of duty as artists in residence. We're going to find out if the arts and crafts ideals of humanity, beauty and simplicity have struck a chord, and if so, has it changed them? Stepping back in time with our six crafters will be the internationally known potter Keith Brimer-Jones and arts and crafts expert Patch Rogers. This week, and for the first time, all the crafters will be working in pairs in a final push to restore this lovely old house. But they don't know yet who they'll be paired up with. It's an arts and crafts mystery tour. Hey, you right? Hello, everybody. The faces we know and love so well. <laughs> so for our first pairing, it's Rod with Steven! <laughs> Come on! Please, boys, put us out of our misery. What have you got? Right, so the first object for this week, for you two boys, is this wonderful mirror, circa 1920s. Now, this mirror was actually made by Edward Barnsley, who was the son of Sidney Barnsley. 
basically used to produce work in a very architectural way. But the simple side of it, don't let that fool you, because actually there needs to be a level of quality there. Sidney and his brother Ernest were inspired by William Morris and his radical design ideas. They moved from London to the Cotswolds to set up workshops to make furniture in the arts and crafts spirit. This meant respect for materials. They favoured exposed tenons and dovetails and solid planks of timber. Decoration was above all to be simple. Nothing should be superfluous. Sidney's son Edward continued the tradition of craftsmanship that still survives at the Barnsley workshop today. All right, the next pairing is Abdullah and me. <laughs> Did you think that one? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> what delight do you have for them both? So, the second item of this week is not so much making, but publishing. <laughs> we want you to create an arts and crafts magazine. I mean, this is the Studio magazine, which started in 1893. I mean, this was the internet of its day. This sort of magazine was giving people ideas in Argentina, in Australia, in America. I mean, it's, it's a hugely important magazine for the arts and crafts movement. How much do we have to put in it? Well, <laughs> 500 pages. Yeah. <laughs> the arts and crafts movement's very own in-house magazine began in 1893. The studio was founded by businessman Charles Holm. He had a passion for all things arts and crafts and went on to buy William Morris's Red House in Bexley Heath. Features included techniques and guides on the aesthetics of home improvement. It promoted arts and crafts designers like Charles Rennie McIntosh and C.R. Ashby. So that leaves you two, our girl gang. So Keith, what do you have for Bryony and Ilsa? So the third and final task for this week is this wonderful CFA Voisey weather vane. He was an absolute perfectionist. I mean, he left nothing to chance. Everything is in the detail. I mean, you know, you've got a real task ahead of you. If you ordered a Voisey house, every object within that house would be made by Voisey. He would absolutely slavishly deal with everything from door handles through to weather vanes to bells on the front. So, you know, he's a real complete designer in that sense. I've been wanting to make a weather vane for absolutely years, but I've just never had the chance to. It will go next to the summer house, and as well as design it, you're going to have to figure out how to attach it safely. No problem. <laughs> Architect designer Charles Francis Ansley Voisey famously said, never look at an ugly thing twice. Born in 1857, Voisey designed everything from houses and furniture to fabric and wallpaper. He was a true believer in the importance of a unifying artistic idea. <laughs> this week our crafters will be attempting new skills, so the library is the place to begin. Study was key to the arts and crafts movement, its tradition of passing skills down the generations would inspire progressive new art schools and technical colleges in London, Glasgow and Birmingham. And there's one more task for the group. There is something I'd like you to make, something for the outside of the house, a joint project, something that maybe uses all your different skills, maybe some materials that you've got lying around and really kind of tells us how you feel about the experience that you've had in the past four weeks of this home. I'd like you to make a pergola. Mm. Pergolas were a great favourite of arts and crafts designers. There was a connection to nature and they lent themselves to a simple, honest style. Managing that, yeah. I think, is going to be the hardest thing because none of us actually know where we're going at the moment with these ideas. Mm. Um, so how do we know all of the components that we're going to need for the whole process and who's going to be able to help where and what time that will take around other things is it's a huge mm. job. So, to the Barnsley Mirror. 
I think it's going to be a big ask. I'm really worried about Steve and, and Rod. I think there could be some <laughs> interesting dynamics going on there. They need to, to really collaborate on this and Stephen, more than anyone, really needs to put his positive input into this task. It's apparent to Rod and Stephen straight away that on this one, they're going to have to ask for a little more help from their friends. So we cut the bone, yeah. file it down to the shape that we want yeah. and call that it. Mm -hmm. We then use that as a stencil. Draw around it, yeah. Makes sense. So that's kind of where we are. We need, we desperately need Abby now to do his joints uh, for us because that's, the idea is to, to feature them. Rod and Stephen have decided to up their game and go for a more ornate mirror favoured by Sydney Barnsley. They've chosen a complicated marquetry inlay and veneer surround. That's really ambitious in the time available. We hope to include some really lovely marquetry, uh, including wood, uh, copper and bone, uh, in the top of the mirror. So basically we're racing through the, the main construction in order to have that palette of the top of the mirror in order to be able to do the uh, inlay. Rod is a seasoned crafter. Stephen has less experience under his belt and is struggling. In the design, we've put room for a little hand washing bowl and a, a jug so that you can wash your hands under the mirror. Uh, whether or not I actually have anything done in time is another question. While Stephen is still formulating his thoughts, Neve has the bit between her teeth. In the busy editor's office, things seem to be on a more even keel. The studio magazine told the world what emerging arts and crafts designers were creating and thinking. The magazine put together by Neve and Abby is aiming to do exactly the same, only for a smaller readership. They're fellow crafters. They'll be using authentic 19th century production methods, which means hand typing, hand drawn illustrations, and the important historic printing process, lithography. Hello! Hey! <laughs> how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm very well. This really suits you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Where are you at? It's going quite well. I've nearly finished the first article. Way! Yeah. Um, wow! I have written the introduction to the magazine. I thought it'd be nice to have an introduction. Can I read it? Yeah. Do you want me to read it out to you? Please do. Okay. What a strange thing to put six strangers in a house with strange tools and strange materials and hope that they thrive. Through rain and sun we've come together in such unexpected ways and have together created beautiful works of art. I hope that you, dear reader, will find this publication not only useful in a practical sense, but also in a way to understand how artists' brains work, how they think, what drives them to create. I hope that some of their passion inspires you to seek out a more creative life. So that's going to go at the start. Wow! <laughs> wow! This was an amazing start. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're a naturally born writer. <laughs> so good. Abby supports Neve's editorial line, but at heart, he's a woodworker, not a journalist. I was ready for uh, large cabinets with some. Uh, voicey style hinges on top of it. It's a challenge, it's, a, it's something new, and I was already grateful I'm gonna learn something absolutely different. We've decided that Abby is going to be doing the art side of things, so he's designing yeah. the cover. That came about for a couple of reasons. One of them, I didn't want to design the cover. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good reason. In the days of word processing and desktop publishing, these Victorian techniques will be a shock to the system. I think the magazine is a real curveball. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting. I mean, the, the, we haven't really got anyone there that, that's kind of worked within that medium before. You know, it's publishing. I mean, it really gave everyone an insight into what was going on in, in the world of artists and craftsmen. The weather vane is a closer fit with Bryony and Ilsa's core skills metalwork and product design. The arts and crafts pioneers were inspired by nature. And they are too. Wow. <laughs> Blimey. 
and nature offers some practical design clues. Quite often in weather vanes, they have an arrow which points yep. in the direction that the wind's coming from. So if we could get an arrow possibly involved as well. It's so hard, all these ideas, and still trying to keep it simple, simple, simple. But I love the idea of this being the eagle's nest viewpoint and having the eagle and the sawing and the... There's so much we could do with that. My first reaction was like, I can't believe I've been allowed to do a weather vane, really excited. My second thought was, ah, the last time I actually did any blacksmithing was about 20 years ago. There's a lot involved in the functionality and the structure. There might be limited scope for creativity and a lot of blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> it's a very complex object. Working moving parts, you know, they're dealing with Voisy, the master of arts and crafts. You know, there needs to be simplicity, it needs to have quality, and it needs to function and work. I've got total faith in them. I am more excited than I have been to see what they come up with. And yeah. time is of the essence, because the sun is setting, and so they'll have six days left. To coin a well-known arts and crafts phrase, time and tide wait for no man. Yeah, indeed. It's another day, it's another set of challenges, but good ones. Good morning, how are you? Very good. This does remind me of the Waltons. You've never seen the Waltons, have you? No. No, I'll tell you about it one day. <laughs> Time and tide wait for no man, and neither does breakfast. Now, this is Swiss eggs, and I think the only reason they're called Swiss eggs is because there's Gruyere cheese in it. But please be careful because the dish is incredibly hot. This morning, editorial policy is on the agenda, and so is gender politics. I think your idea, Neve, to build in how-to guides, because a lot of it was about middle-class women educating themselves in yeah. arts and crafts and the magazine would be the perfect format. Isn't that a bit patronising? Mm. In what way? Well, sort of teaching middle class women well, teaching themselves how to... that's what happens. Yeah, but shouldn't we, just, shouldn't we just teach the craft yeah. and then let men or women... Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I was just about to say, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think I that's think the thing, it's just a how-to guy. Yeah. And mm. who, who cares <laughs> who's yeah. inspired by it? Yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. they'd be lovely to have a couple of leading yeah, articles yeah. highlighting... Yeah of women at the time who were amazing artisans. In what was a bold step for the day, the arts and crafts movement positively welcomed women. Margaret MacDonald McIntosh was one of the first women to attend day classes at Glasgow School of Art. She became a significant artist by the turn of the century. By now, the spirit of the British arts and crafts movement had travelled across Europe. Margaret exhibited internationally and her stunning gesso panels had a big influence on the great Austrian artist, Gustav Klimt. Bryony and Ilse are about to venture into what, a century ago, was a strictly male preserve. Their designs complete, they're now ready to start making their weather vane at the local forge. Blacksmith Ross Smith will be their guide. So far, Bryony and I have been talking about um, our, our mums. That's where we started. We both lost our mums recently. And some of the things that we discussed was things such as she's been finding lots of feathers around in her metal shed. And we started to talk about birds. And I talked about a song that meant something to me and my mum. Uh, it was called An Eagle When She Flies. And then we started to think about what an eagle meant. And the eagle itself is about clarity of vision and power and strength. The difference in this project is that it's not just my project, it's Ilsa and my project. And in a way, that's even more fun because I was saying, she was like, oh, I don't do metal work. And I was saying, well, the joy is I haven't done this kind of blacksmithing for years. So let's both go and learn how to do the blacksmithing. The local smithy was a key partner in arts and crafts. At the forge, wrought iron could be made functional and attractive. 
And for Charles Voisy, even the very smallest detail had to be beautiful. He believed a cast iron fireplace was the heart of the room and made this clear with his famous love heart designs. First, Bryony and Ilsa need to set about creating the wrought iron structure. It's all yours. We've got one complete, one complete turn. Twisting the heated iron requires strength and precision. While the metal is hot, other elements need to be bent around shaped formers. Yes. Brilliant. But will the other one? Right, let me chop this in half. If we can get the whole sorted here. Rivet and done at home, I'll do the card thing in the middle, you do the eagle, then tomorrow it's only the cuffs and the assembly. Yeah. Of diamonds. Yeah. Hello, yes. ladies. Are uh, you impressed? I am. It looks it looks really good. It looks really promising. Excellent. We've made really good progress. I think we started to get excited about the same things. Our minds went in slightly different directions. But then somehow yeah, so we found a way to, get to... Back in again, yeah. yeah. But I think the aim is by the end of tomorrow to have finished all this part and then go back to the metal sheds at the house and really start concentrating on the eagle and the arrow, which will be the spinning part on the top. What made you think of an eagle? We started talking about our mums yeah. and the energy that we have got from them. And it's something that also brought Ilsa and I together because my mum died very recently. And we both feel that our mums have been very supportive in, in what we do and mm. giving us energy. In, and so it's just really lovely to actually bring that out in the final project. You're connecting the fact that it's that, that, that it's in the local area with the with the eagle, and for for want of not trying to cry, you're also connecting it <laughs> with your mothers, <laughs> which is great, yeah. fantastic, yeah, I love it. <laughs> what are we like? <laughs> anyway, I'll leave you to it because it's it, you've got a lot of work still to do, and um, and I'll, I can't wait to see it. Bryony and Ilsa, they seem to be working really, really well together. They've never done that before. They've never done this process. They're really understanding the material. It's inspirational, it's great. Abby's been inspired too by the whole experience of working with his fellow crafters. And last night, uh, I came up with an idea, said how about we're going to be having an interview with, uh, with all the uh, artists here. Um, what if we just put the portraits of them next to it, so it'd be more uh, interactive and more fun to look at. And she liked it, gave me thumbs up, and uh, I must say all night last night I was full of joy and just drawing till morning. <laughs> and it was, it was fascinating. Thinking about how she's been energised and stimulated by being with the group, Neves decided to write an article for the magazine on why artists create. Right. Finishing this design. I am here to you interview to? you. I'm getting around everyone. I have to interview you. I'm sorry you did not call my secretary before. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Oh, Neve. <laughs> not only do Neve and Abby have to generate the written content, they'll have to be graphic designers and publishers too. But Neve is philosophical. I think the magazine's going to come off fine and Similar to the curtains last week, because I have no idea of the processes, there's no panic, because there's no point in panicking. That's certainly one way of looking at it. All is also calm in the woodshed. Rod is working on his own to make the mirror frame, inspired by one of Patch's favourite designers. I love Barnsley's work on the basis that it was as good as it could get within the furniture making. Barnsley workshops make the most exquisite furniture. It embodies craftsmanship. I mean, it allows the craftsman to excel to its absolute limits. And I think that that's what I love about the Barnsley furniture. You know, it's beautifully made. It's a challenge that Rod seems to be taking in his stride. I can work in metal, wood, most things. Steve works in ceramics. Steve is a ceramicist. People were very keen for us to get a ceramic element into a wooden and glass mirror. Really, really difficult. So we decided to let Steve have free reign. 
But for Stephen, free reign isn't quite as liberating as it sounds. I'm probably trying to throw too big. I get myself in a knot and I just get frustrated with it. And by the end of it, I'm just flinging any old block of clay on just to try and make a thing with it, which is quite frustrating, but... Um, yeah, probably should just pack it and go and do something that's actually, uh, you know, going to work. <laughs> well, no one said making beautiful objects would be easy. Abby isn't taking things easy either. He's ahead with his work on the magazine, so he's taking the lead on the group's pergola project. I'm designing a pergola right now and uh, I can see one or two ways to do that, um, to, to fit in with the structure of the entrance. I'm actually excited to share it with everyone and see what others, other people think. So um, if, if it goes forward, everybody gives thumbs up, um, I'll make it and whoever wants to come and join will come and join. The next morning, having worked on his design on paper, Abby now needs to see if his ideas will work in practice. So, this is one third of the whole structure of the pergola. This is going to be all going together and interlocked within each other without glue. I think in time management, uh, we are still a little bit lacking from my pers per um, personal point of view. Which is part of it, <laughs> you know, which is, can be the spice of it, you know. The uh, spice is needed. The entrance needs to be bigger. So um, that's why I designed this coming um, forward that way, quite angular. And that is going to be supporting the design from the, um, from the crown of the door. So hopefully it will complement it. <laughs> While Abby puzzles over the pergola, Neve is busy with the content of the magazine, and it's from the heart. I am writing an article about craft and chronic illness, which is something that I have quite a lot of experience with. <laughs> I have arthritis in pretty much every major joint in my body, and it's starting to get into my hands and my fingers, which is obviously slightly worrying. So. The article is firstly about my history, um, but then about how essentially craft gives people with chronic illnesses freedom. The Arts and Crafts founders shared Neve's beliefs that the exercise of creativity could have a therapeutic effect on disability. Artist guilds often supported and taught a trade to the Victorian ill and poor. One was founded by the Duchess of Sutherland in 1900 to help disabled children and teach them metalworking skills. Abby hasn't just been designing the pergola, he's been redesigning the other crafters. Is this everyone in the house? It's everybody in the house. Um, so... Is that Steve? <laughs> so this is Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> is that Rod? That's Rod. Oh. In his Sunday outfit. Oh. <laughs> Sunday best. <laughs> oh my God, that's so Bryony. That's amazing. I know. And I'm Do gonna... you like them? Yeah, I'm I love so happy. them. Thank you so much. And I'm going to put those in the typewriter and type up the interviews around their pictures. This so far been my best collaboration. That's I'm really cool. enjoying this, thank you. It's, uh, you're so chilled to work with, so chilled. <laughs> That's the first time anyone has ever called me chilled. <laughs> so chilled to work with. One of the Barnsley Mirror's decorative features will be carved in bone and shaped as a flower much loved by Victorians, an iris. Just cutting lines, basically. Yeah. All these leaves are, are just wood, mm -hmm. so that gives us a chance to, to practice on that before we get to the really tricky, not even tricky bits, but the bits that we have to really put some real effort in. Yeah. But that's where your uh, little cabochons will go, and it's right in the middle of the bones. Okay. You've got anything? 
out of your own stuff yet? Eh, no. Nah, nothing. I, I'm happy to come and spend a bit of time. No, no, like, come on. There's not a, there's not a lot we can really do about it. Events are proving overwhelming for Stephen. <laughs> to create the eagle that will perch on top of the Voise weather vane, Bryony is using a technique called repousse, forming a pattern in relief, or 3D, by hammering away from the reverse side. This is the central structure, which is a tube that will fit on the steel part of the top of the weather vane. And there's going to be a ball bearing hidden in there, so the top of the steel basically just hits that, so that is able to spin. And then I've been sawing out the arrow, which Ilsa has designed um, based on a Welsh love spoon. So they will be in the direction. That means that shows you the direction that the wind's going. Um, so I'm going to have a huge wing on the back, which will provide that area for the wind to hit. But the main thing about a weather vane, this spinning bit, it has to be balanced on here. So to counteract the weight of this large wing, I need to have, I need to double up basically my copper on here. So I'm adding things like the legs, which will cover up the tube, and there'll be one on that side as well, and the head, which is going to be made in two parts so that it looks 3D. So here is the beginnings of my head. I've chased the outlines of the eyes um, for the beak, and then what I'll do is I'll flip it over and really puff out the beak so that it's much more three-dimensional. So you'll have quite a good looking head, but we wanted it, the eagle, to look like it's taking off, so I've really wanted it to be sitting on this perch, but about to leap off. Someone who'd have approved of Bryony's painstaking attention to detail is Voisey himself. Everything that Voisey produced had beautiful craftsmanship. He, he sought out the best craftspeople to make, to make his work, and he understood the process of making which is an important part of the designer's ability to be able to design great things, is that they understand the process. He typifies for me um, what the arts and crafts movement wanted to convey, and what that was, was a sense of proportion, a sense of well-made, functioning furniture or design. Stevens moved on to the marquetry for the mirror surround, the intricate inlay of different woods. The Victorians couldn't get enough of this technique. They used it on all sorts of decorative items, from tables to clocks. We are trundling along with the project. The project is hard because the, the piece is actually quite small, but the um, attention to detail and the quality has to be absolutely superb. I think uh, with Rod, he wants to make his standard on everything up to very, very high quality. Actually looking at it now, like it's, it just needs glued in and a uh, stuck together and it's just as good as anyone could ask. It's halfway through the week, but while there's still a lot of work to do, I say, anyone for a spot of croquet? Ooh. Oh, okay, now that was contact. I've been dying to do this. <laughs> Personally, I'm slightly heartbroken that we're going home next week. Everybody else is like, yeah, we get to leave, we get to see our fans, like, you know, like, yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm obviously looking forward to seeing friends and family, but I don't want to leave here. Not at all. What? <laughs> 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 hey. <laughs> Impressive. Yes, it. Yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> Neve and Abby are ready to take their front cover to the printers to begin the highly complex process of lithography. I am very nervous. I am very nervous. It's, it's like walking into a dark room. Um, I got no understanding about the next process that I'm going to be doing. Developed in the late 18th century, lithography made it possible to produce a huge edition of prints from a single image. Pete Williams will help Neve and Abby through the process. 
Hey. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Hi, Neve. Hello. Nice to Hello. meet you. How you doing? So I understand you want to do some drawings on our stones. Plug the whole thing with water first. The absorbency of limestone makes it perfect for this technique. First, it's cleaned and saturated with water. You can see it changes colour. Then you pick up the levigator, place it in the middle. OK, and then you spin the stone. This prepares the limestone for an image to be drawn on in waxy crayon. Before printing, the stone is cleaned again with water, but the ink will remain in the waxy areas. I was not expecting this at all. <laughs> Good that you've done it backwards. OK, so you need to transfer that drawing onto that stone. OK. I am applying liquid touche onto the stone, and it's a quite breathtaking process, because one mistake, I have ruined the magazine. Keith has heard that Stephen's difficulties making the mirror wash basin are getting him down. Worried he'll lose all enthusiasm for their shared craft, Keith puts on an impromptu masterclass. That slight curve in the base will now determine how I flare out the outside of it. That cross section then is completely regular. You're self-taught, right? And the way you approach the clay, honestly, it's amazing, really. That's incredibly controlled, really. That's not right. Well, you're losing it now a bit, but that's all right. Think of what it's for, though. Now, you've got to get the water out at yeah. some point. Mm -hmm. So I use the sponge as a tool as well. Okay. So give us your hand, go like that. I'll, I'll apply that much pressure with the sponge. So the sponge isn't just getting the water out, it's okay. actually reshaping the clay. At the printers, Abby's finished etching his front cover on the limestone block. But after almost five hours of effort, will it actually work? Back to the edges. I think this experience has taught me to be less scared, less worried, to be more calm and not stressed when things go wrong. So this e grease, I'm hoping we'll just go with the images. <laughs> it's amazing, love it. So we're going to place our printing paper over the top and set up the press. The pressure. Grab the handle and turn it. Wrong there, don't stop now. All the way through. Stop there. And we lift the bar up, pressure comes off. Now for the moment of truth. <laughs> Way. Oh, That's wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. It's a funny week this week. No. We've all kind of... Cross-pollinated. Cross-pollinated, yeah. yeah. We, we wanted very much to put ceramics into the design. So we've been leaving Stu some space. Don't look like that. No, but but we've been leaving us some space to, 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 get that, to get that done. Well, look, I'll leave you to it. Okay. And, and I'll see you a lot later. All OK, right? thanks. The only thing that's clear with the mirror is that it's a long way from being finished off. This is the bone that's going to go on top of the mirror and we've got it all mapped out into sections. Bone's only so big, <laughs> you know, so we kind of have to make it up out of uh, pieces of bone. Cunningly, Stephen and Rod have managed to snaffle the bone that was used to make the calf's foot jelly. crafters are outside their comfort zone, including Abby and Neve. You predominantly work with fabric and you work with wood. Mm -hmm. What's it like working on something like this? This is completely different really, isn't it? Yeah, it is fairly different. I, mm. I just really enjoy writing and I write in my spare time, so it's, it's all right. Well, it is a creative process yeah. after all, isn't it? 
you're making sure that it starts and crafts. How are you approaching that? I mean, I think the design for the front cover is of the style of the arts and crafts movement. And I've gone a little bit political in some of the articles, so that's a, that's a bit arts and craftsy. You're working with Neve on this, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. But you're, are you also, you're working on this pergola, are you? Well, I'm all over the place a little bit, but this is my priority. Okay. So whenever I'm not needed here, I try to help other places. Okay. It's actually working quite well because obviously there is, there's only one typewriter. Yeah, it's, no, you yeah. Know, and Abby's, you know, been providing me with the illustrations in the morning and then I've just been typing over them. How are you going to bind them together? Uh, so I've been researching. I think I'm going to do a saddle stitch. Oh, I haven't okay. tested it yet, but it seems to be the easiest. Well, that would be nice because it's a connection to your discipline anyway, yeah. which would be, yeah, quite nice. So uh, you've done a drawing of everyone, have you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's you. Nice. <laughs> I'm wondering what this bit is here. <laughs> it's that kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, with friends like these, <laughs> the Pergola is a group project. Everyone's involved. Ilsa is looking after the finer detailing. The leaves have been made by different people in the house. Those that had time made a few extra so that we could use some on the pergola. Ilsa's heating the copper leaves with borax, a mineral that gives a sparkling shine and the effect of an autumn leaf. Things are progressing well in the eagle's nest. Stephen and Rod are both fully committed to the ethos of handcrafting, of course. But it's a slow process, and they're behind. Luckily for them, help is at hand. Rod and Stephen asked me if I can do uh, dovetail joinery in their project. So I spoke to Neve, and she's doing the typing right now. I have given all the illustrations to her and a couple of articles. So, I know that if I finish this by lunchtime, I am good with my project, which is the magazine, and I have helped friends. Everything that Neve asked me is ready for her. So, she created a list, and, well, we created a list in a way, and um, I have ticked all of the responsibilities that she asked me to. So, I'm leaving her to what she's doing. And now help is needed on Project Pergola 2. That's fallen behind. So Ilsa has drafted in another willing worker, Keith. So what, is that it, on the floor? Yeah. Right, OK. So this part, this is where the door is. Yeah. This is the, roughly the, the, the design of the finished piece. OK, fine. Well, uh, right. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers, thanks. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for help. I have not used this technique before, but Abby showed me yesterday how he wants it to be done. Yeah. So he said that if we just go along the marked line... Yeah. ..and just... Give it a thumb. ..score it. Yeah. And then he said if you do it again here, like halfway... Yeah. ..then he said one side should fall out, the other side should fall out, and the mid middle will also do the same, and then it's a case of working backwards. backwards. Give it a good bash. OK. So, we're nearly, we're nearly at the end of this whole challenge. Mm -hmm. Do you think you've learned much from it? I think I've learned that it's important to be connected with materials to design yeah, more yeah. effectively. Yeah. Um, I think I am definitely going to be more hands-on with the things that I produce. Yeah. And go back to using a range of materials, which is what I used to do. Um, darling, I think there is a These, little... This needs to overlap more, that's oh, why. I see. Okay, it was, okay, okay. It was... So the construction of the pergola, I mean, that's they haven't got long to go. I can't see how they're going to get it done. I really, I really can't. It's still on the floor. It's not up yet. It's getting late in the day and uh, I'm still making the uh, frame for Rod and Steven so they can uh, do their pretty parts with time and relaxation, <laughs> hopefully.
yeah, otherwise it wouldn't have happened. Um, we all have to give each other a hand to, to get the deadline right. It's got a lo lot of detail on ours, um, so we've got a bit of time to go yet. Um, we're also having to wait for things to glue and processes and things like that, so... It's not over till the fat lady sings. Oh, it was the fat lady sings, sure. yeah, that's right. We're coming up on the rails. Once again, but now for the final time, our crafters are rushing to get their creations finished. That's really nice. That's really nice. I've never done saddle stitching before, so that's a new thing that I've learned. The framework we sort of finished and, and, and is good. Abby's done his magic on the, the joints. And this is the marker tree. So the marker tree is lots of pieces of thin veneer. This has to line up with the top. Before I cut the veneer, I just really want to check that that's going to wrap round nicely. Pretty amazing, pretty good. Stephen's been working again most of the night on the bone. Is a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So all you'll see is the clean white surface on the top, and these little hearts are the centre of the iris. So um, I'm just really thinking hard about it, making sure I haven't made any mistakes, making sure there's nothing I can get wrong, because I want this fit of the veneer and the surround to be absolutely perfect. The gold goes on really well, it's nice coverage and it means that we only have to do one coat which is not going to clog up where we've got ours and our mother's initials. Oh good, can you still really see them? Yeah, they're really prominent. Oh, yeah. yeah, that works really well. They'd be chuffed to bits with us. <laughs> the arts and crafts movement was a revolutionary moment in social history. Striving for joy in work and beauty that could be enjoyed by all. In the objects they've made in their final week, have the crafters been able to match up to these ambitious, still radical ideals? Let's see what Patch and Keith think. Thank you, Keith. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Oh, good. Yeah, they finally finished it. <laughs> I was really worried about this, I must say. Oh, wow. Look, look, here we are. Wow. Here we are. Oh. Wow. The can book, we, just... the mirror, the weather vane. Can I touch it? Wow. In one week, Ilsa and Bryony have created the Voisey style weather vane. The delicate repoussé work of the eagle crowning the structure, a design they both agreed on, was created by Bryony. Wow. Wow. Isn't it great? This is a thing of mag... This is... Isn't it fantastic? Oh, my goodness oh, no. me. And look, MJB. Yeah, they put their... Um, initials there. Their initials all... And they put their mother's initials on it as well. Oh, wow. That's How beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. Well, look at these yeah. beautiful uh, north, south... East and West, look how smooth they are. It's lovely, they've been well finished, haven't they? Haven't they, no. yes. It, it's yeah. been, it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, they've was... given themselves enough time. And the most important thing, they have finished it. Yes. And they've finished it to a high degree. <laughs> it's not kind of substandard in any way. All, all of the elements are there and all of the detail is there. Rod and Stephen decided on a decorative interpretation of a Barnsley mirror. They incorporated marquetry, bone inlay and veneer. Is it arts and crafts? Uh, yes, I think it is. I mean, there's obviously the dovetails. I think that's a very arts and crafts trait to show the construction. Uh, the inlay, they've used bone, they've used another timber, I think it's mahogany within there. And they've used the ceramic little details, which I think is really lovely. It definitely mirrors, no pun intended, the work of Sidney Barnsley. And right. I think that they've, they've captured that. But for me, they just lost a little bit of the detail in the top there. That's a shame. Yeah. Stephen produced a bowl and two cups to accompany the mirror. Um, he's obviously had some issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
it's a, you know what? It's actually a really lovely shape. Mm. I just wish he'd finished it off properly. There's loads of technical problems with it. One being that it's cracked. That's yeah. the obvious one. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind the colour at all. I quite like the form of yeah, that. Me I think too. It's, it's simple. It's simple, it's, you know, yeah. Neve and Abby created an arts and crafts magazine. She being in charge of the copy, he the graphic design. Oh, look! The House of Arts and Crafts. It's ah, embroidered. That's beautiful. Look at that. That's, that's amazing. That's so clever. And beautifully, beautifully stylized. Yeah. I mean, that's a real lovely that's little That's lovely arts and in crafts. itself, isn't it? But How have they done this? How have they printed that? I'm going to start getting emotional now. But that's been lithographed. That's been hand carved out in stone mm. and printed. On stone? No, it's, it's just incredible, really. That's amazing. It's an amazing process. I just can't get over the beautiful embroidered flowers and leaves. That is so. Beautiful. Look. All these illustrations are all done by um, Abdullah. They're beautiful. Neve did all the typing. Beautiful illustrations. Pen. Lovely. So I think I'm torn. You, you know, the thing for me is I kind of knew and was really excited about the weather vane because I just wanted to see Bryony and Ilsa working together. I just knew it was going to be magnificent. Mm. So although I had high expectations and they have been met, I was completely surprised and blown away by that magazine. Yeah, I think it's surprised us, but I think we're quite enjoying the element of surprise and I think we're all pretty aligned in our decision. Yeah. Woo Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> appropriate that you walked out of your pergola that you all had something to do with. So who's going to talk us through it? Yeah, it was a team build. Mostly Abby's design, some input from Bryony about how it funnels people into the house through the door. Everybody made the copper shim leaves that you see in the corners oh, yeah. um, and then also on the front. Lovely. And then there's conkers and hopscotch for later. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. I mean, it's really symbolic of the arts and crafts movement. I love it. Yeah. I love the shape of it. I like the way it funnels you. It invites you into the house. Yeah, it's just a really amazing thing. Well yeah. done. Well done. All right, we should start with the magazine. Neve, Abby. It's a beautiful magazine. I think you've done yourselves proud. You haven't just produced a magazine. <laughs> the content's brilliant. It's absolutely wonderful. You know, it, it just, it does make you just want to turn the pages. It's fantastic. It has all the sentiment of the arts and crafts period. I think it's, I think it sums it up. I mean, you've got a hand embroidered cover, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fantastic. And when it talks about all the, the elements within, it really embraces the whole four weeks for me. It's a real triumph. I think it's fantastic. Well done. Do you know what? I actually like the shape of that bowl. I think it is actually quite a Victorian shape. And, and, it's, and it's really in the style of, of, of something that you would find in a house like this. Let's talk about your collaboration with what? The mirror. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised, nicely surprised, that you've actually got it here. Because when I saw it during the week, mm. it, it was in pieces. There wasn't any bone cut. There wasn't any of the, the ceramic pieces that you've inlaid in there. there. There really wasn't anything. You've really pulled it together. The one bit for me is that top. I just can't get over its kind of wibbly wobbly shape. It's not really working for me, but the inlay is fantastic. I love it. I love the little cabochons, the ceramic cabochons, the little hearts, the little centre of the iris. I think that's beautiful. And you know, the dovetails, fantastic. I think, it's, I, think, I think you've achieved a great thing, really. I mean, it's, you know, it's here, it's done, it's finished. Well done. On to the final pairing. <laughs> Elsa and Bryony, <laughs> tell us about this piece of work at the end. The whole design of the actual blacksmithing was to try and create the idea of wind and turbulence around the world. Head, hand, heart. It's there. You've, got, you've absolutely nailed it. I mean, the simplicity of the letters, the eagle is in flight. I think it's absolutely stunning. And the making of the, of the object is also beautifully done. And it's finished. And it's finished well. It's a great, it's a great piece. Really fantastic. That story and that connection with the finished article is so important in the arts and crafts movement. As Patch has said, you've hit the nail on the head, or, or the rivet on the head, um, <laughs> because you've really managed to, to breathe life into that eagle. It, it's standing there, it's looking proud, it's absolutely fantastic. So to the object of the week, it was a really tough decision, but a decision has been made and it's unanimous. We all agree that the object of the week is the weather vane. Well done, girls. It's amazing.
Thank you. Well done, well done. Well done, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well uh, yeah, Good work. Hard work. <laughs> Hard. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. But what a week. Bryony and Ilse's Voicey Weather Vane is judged to uphold the true legacy of arts and crafts with honest, beautiful and functional design. And here's to that. For a month, the crafters have lived the life of a Victorian arts and crafts commune. Living and working together, following the ideals of Ruskin and Morris as they created beautiful objects. So, has their time together struck a chord with our 21st century artisans? What have they learned from the arts and crafts pioneers? And has their relationship with their own creativity and craft changed? The thing that I will take back is about the whole ethos of work and companionship and who you work with. That, I think, will be ringing in my ears. I was honoured to travel back in Victorian time. I wish that I actually did leave and be William Morris's and his, and his fellows' lifestyle because that really, it's, it has a really big impact on me. I think what I've learned is I don't need to be so reliant on technology and computers. I've got all the skills there. It's just always been the easy option. And actually, there's a real pleasure in knowing that you've hand-drawn things. In hindsight, I may spend a little bit more time looking a bit more at the spirits and, and, and the joy of the thing rather than just um, the nuts and bolts. I think what I'm going to take away from it is that, like stick to like learning and getting good at things, but if you ever get the opportunity to speak to somebody else from another discipline, you know, spend a good amount of time talking to them and learning from them because, you know, you'll always find that there's parallels in between uh, everything. It's been a real privilege to be here, to make things and to do things. And <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, once in a lifetime, and I feel just so lucky. <laughs> I really hope people get out there, stop just using these, and use all the digits, and make something wonderful. And if it's not wonderful, just enjoy the process. That's what it's really all about. So the Arts and Crafts movement, it's 150 years ago, and here we are today, reliving that and it's a, it's a fantastic thing to see. I think the crafters here over the last four weeks have done an amazing job and that's the legacy of the arts and crafts movement and I think they've really embodied that. been an incredible four weeks. Not only have they made some truly beautiful objects, they have tapped into the spirit of the arts and crafts movement. And maybe we should all remember the words of William Morris, have nothing in your homes you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. Mm -hmm.